we are essentially going to become something akin to a god. Friends of mine at MIT, who they've written papers about what it would take to become a god. <sighs> this is what I do for a living. Ah, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but again, it's fun. I mean, oh, to yeah. me, this is what I wanted to do when I was eight years old. It's hard to believe how a person could not be thrilled when they learn about the Big Bang, they yeah. learn about string theory, they learn about parallel universes and wormholes. Our universe has stable protons, out of which you can create elements, out of which you could create DNA, out of which you can create life. That's a miracle. All the parameters of the universe are tuned just right to allow for life. Wow. We're always looking for these Goldilocks planets, which are very rare, which may inhabit life or may have life on it. But we look at our own solar system and there's just us. So In other words, there could be a Goldilocks zone for universes. Yes. The just Goldilocks like there is for zone planets. For, for solar systems, of course, is the yeah. Earth is not too far from the sun, not too close. Mm. But we could be in the Goldilocks zone of possible universes. By the time you are a type three civilization, you have the energy to manipulate the Planck energy. The Planck energy is the ultimate energy of the universe, of the quantum theory. You take the quantum theory and relativity and scale it up all the way, just let it rip. What is the highest energy you can attain and then something new happens? That's called the Planck energy. Hmm. It's a quadrillion times more powerful than our biggest atom smasher in Geneva, Switzerland. At that point, space becomes unstable. It wouldn't be stable there. Our universe was created because empty space was heated to the Planck energy, and at that point, space itself began to boil. And the boiling of space created the universe. When you start to boil space to the Planck temperature, all of a sudden, it becomes unstable. Bubbles begin to form. And these bubbles are gateways to other universes. These are baby wormholes to other universes. We realize that if you could attain the Planck energy in a box, let's say, somehow, a bubble would form, a gateway to another universe, it would expand. It would expand rapidly, and you have to be very careful. <laughs> yeah. If it expands too rapidly, it has a force of, uh, I think, a 10 kiloton atomic bomb. So you have to be out of the way when this thing explodes. But then it simply peels off and creates another universe, and then it disappears. <sighs> like a balloon, like a piece of a balloon that pinches off, if you're on the first part of the balloon, you never see the second part of the balloon. The second part of the balloon has peeled off to create a baby universe. Wow. Okay? So these are called baby universes. We think that our universe was one of these. Most of these universes, like boiling water, pop out of existence and they pop back in. They never get anywhere. But one of these bubbles kept on going, and that became our universe. If you could boil space, heat space up to the Planck energy, Space becomes unstable, bubbles form, and these bubbles, one of these bubbles may just keep on expanding to create another universe. Now, and we wouldn't have access to this universe. No, it would peel off, just like a balloon, a, the second part of the balloon peels off from the first part, and the two separate. The two separate. The only way to get reconnected is through a wormhole. But that, of course, is a whole other story. But that would be a possibility of recreating a link between our universe and another universe. So we could potentially create one of these mini universes. That's right. And this mini universe would exist in a completely different place. That's right. It could be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> you have to make sure that the explosion doesn't kill you in the process. But yeah, this is what it would take to create a baby universe. Uh, we call this the inflationary theory because the other balloon inflated rapidly. So this is part of what is called the inflationary universe. And believe it or not, this is the dominant theory of uh, Genesis. Uh, where did Genesis come from? We think it came from this balloon that uh, empty space boiled, empty space then created a pocket that then expanded and then peeled off from our universe. Uh, this is called the inflationary universe theory, which is the dominant theory in quantum cosmology. Have you ever considered the possibility that that is ultimately how the universe gets created in the first place? We think that this is how our universe got created. That our universe was a bubble floating with other bubbles. These other bubbles went back into the vacuum. Our bubble just kept on going and became our universe. We've done the calculation actually of what it would take for a human to then create something like this. 
Uh, step one is you have to have power on the scale of the Planck energy. <laughs> and the Planck energy is the, the biggest number that you can possibly imagine. But it is the number at which space becomes unstable. And that's the point at which this bubble then starts to expand. So you've played around with these ideas. That's right. We had uh, Michio Kaku was on yesterday. Uh, Michio uh, Kaku. Do you know who he is? I heard about him. He, he's the scientist. Right? Yes, he's yeah. a quantum physicist. And he was on discussing quantum computing. And it's so I can't above even open my, my laptop. Dude. It's so above my head. Yeah, yeah. It's so above my head. It's so hard. To, he's like... He's he's so smart. It's like he's like hanging out with toddlers, you know. Like when mm. he's when he was seventeen years old, he made a particle collider in his garage. Mm. I don't know what a particle collider is. It's miles and miles of copper tubing, and it sends something through it. And he photographed antimatter in his garage with this device mm. it, when he was seventeen. Wow, like that's a different kind of human. This guy was making a particle collider in his basement. Wow. Wow. Or in his garage. Wow. It's crazy. There's people that are just, they're so much m smarter than you are. That's right. We're probably the last of our species to experience life not being some sort of a cyborg. Now listen to me very carefully. 